Welcome back. As markets continue to address the fallout of Silicon Valley Bank's collapse, investors are looking to the Fed for insight on how the crash will affect the next rate hike. Will the Fed stop early? Markets are betting heavily it will, but that could, what could that mean for the strength of the U.S. dollar? For more on foreign exchange market, let's get to ING foreign exchange strategist Francesco Pesole. Uh, Francesco, thank you for joining us here today. Um, let me ask you about the U.S. Let's just start with the U.S. dollar because we saw it strengthen last year as the Fed, as Jay Powell got incredibly hawkish, then we got a reprieve. And the strong dollar has been a headwind for risk assets. And when it retreats, um, it's <laughs> It's been a tailwind. And here we have a one year chart of the U.S. dollar index. So I was talking about that strengthening over the last year, followed by the weakening since late last year. And again, we have this strengthening. A lot hinges on what the Fed does next week. Just wondering about your outlook for the dollar over the following weeks and months. Yeah, well, everything looked um, pretty straightforward in a way uh, up until kind of last week. Uh, you know, the Fed had turned again very hawkish in its rhetoric. and. Um, you know, up until the uh, Silicon Valley Bank collapse, it looked like they would do either 25 basis points or, uh, 20, or, or 50 basis points uh, at the March meeting. And now I think the question is whether they will hike rates at all. And uh, I think at this point, given what's going on, um, it's uh, looking likely that they might not hike at all. Um, now, the question is uh, really how much does, uh, does this matter for the dollar? And uh, in our view, this may not matter all that much uh, at a first uh, impact in the sense that uh, the impact of uh, short-term rate differentials on the dollar is not that huge at the moment. Uh, what really matters is how much and um, kind of turning to a dovish rhetoric actually manages to uh, kind of calm markets' nerves and manages to stabilize market sentiment. So if indeed uh, turning dovish uh, ultimately uh, triggers a rebound in market sentiment and equities rebound, then the dollar will fall. If it uh, fails to do that, then the dollar will remain strong. And what, what are you betting on in that scenario? Do you think that they'll succeed in, in, in that market calming? Well, it's not easy to bet in such volatile markets, but yeah. uh, I think um, the the risks, uh, the, the the bank's risks are is tilted for a weaker dollar uh, at the moment. Uh, if we don't see kind of the Credit Suisse story get any worse than this, so I mean, if we really see that contagion. Uh, in European uh, kind of banking stocks and banking system mm -hmm. get much worse than this, then, you know, it's hard to see the dollar um, come back lower it's, it's, it's simply because markets are going to look for uh, safe havens, uh, but regardless of what the Fed does, yeah. and it's going to be much harder for the Fed to lift sentiment if, you know, there's a, such a major institution collapsing. Francesco, I, I hear the difficulty uh, ascribing probabilities to all of this because things are changing on a, very much on a daily basis. I want to go to some theory here, and I'm going to go to the Wi-Fi Interactive where I have uh, the euro versus the yen, and this is a more exotic pair, but we were talking about the carry trade on the show yesterday and this as a proxy for it. What we see here over the last five days, and this was really uh, happening yesterday, was this acceleration. This was a weakening of the euro and a strengthening of the yen. And I want to put a 20-year chart on and show everybody what happened in prior crises. Now, in 2008, we had this top where we had uh, the carry trade expressed in the euro yen. That peaked, and then we had a precipitous fall as the global financial crisis unraveled. And then we had a similar peak before the slowdown in 2015, 2016. I'm just wondering, do you think this peak has legs here? Uh, do you think we're potentially seeing a topping? Because this would point to more of the end stage in the current business cycle, where you see that money rushing back into the yen. Yeah, well, you know, th this is a very unique business cycle, unlike others. Uh, obviously, the Fed that we got out of the pandemic of uh, such unique and huge um, monetary stimulus 
and the fact that we are facing um, huge uh, inflationary pressures across the world and now uh, this very sudden and uh, very hard to predict kind of uh, banking and financial crisis um, in the US and now seemingly in the Eurozone, uh, in, in, the, in, in Europe as well. Uh, I think uh, when looking at the yen, you know, um, everyone was uh, kind of saying it all depends on the Bank of Japan, whether they will turn hawkish, um, at, at what point they will turn hawkish and that will allow the yen to rebound. At, at this point, it, it, everything has changed. The forces have changed in the FX market because if indeed uh, central banks are no longer reacting on the back of uh, um, of inflation simply, but on financial risk, on contagion risk of, of the banking sector, uh, then the fact that the Bank of Japan stays dovish, it doesn't mean that the yen cannot rally because the, the yen can simply rally on the risk of contagion and the risk of financial risks. So we're back to a scenario that you just described, mm -hmm. where essentially the yen simply rallies on safe haven. And you see today is the best performing currency in uh, the G10 space. Yeah, we're definitely in an environment where people are looking for safety. That is for sure. Francesco, thank you. Francesco Fizzoli, ING Foreign Exchange Strategist. Appreciate it.